Welcome back, guys. Um, thank you for joining me today. Um, I, the reason why I'm coming on today is God's put it on my heart to um, tell you guys about Jesus. Because um, a lot of people just don't have time or don't want to go to read Jesus Unraveled. or um, But it's getting really a, about time where everybody needs to know who Jesus is. And this is exactly who he is. And this is exactly how you worship um his father uh because you're getting it right from jesus and how he worshiped his father um which is how you worship his father and jesus both so um this comes from the four gospels which come which basically is what jesus unraveled is all mixed into one um just given a large um, overview of uh jesus's assignment that he had on this earth so that's exactly what I'm here to do is this is my assignment is to give you this. So um, it's going to be probably in several parts because it's quite long, but uh, bear with me. It's going to, but it's going to give you everything that Jesus did to worship his father. So we'll know what to do to worship Jesus, his father and Jesus both. So here we go. This is from the very beginning whenever Jesus was being tempted by Satan um, when he was in the uh, wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights. Uh, basically, he said, People do not live on bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. That's Deuteronomy 8.3. Um, he said this whenever Satan tells Jesus to turn, turn a stone into bread um, so he could satisfy his excruciating hunger because he'd been in the desert starving for 40 days. Um, the next one is, uh, same same time during the 40 days, 40 nights. You must not test the Lord God. Deuteronomy 6.16. Uh, that's when God says God will protect you and he will send his angels to catch you so you don't even strike your foot on a stone. Um, that is um, quoting Psalms 91, which is a prayer that I say nightly uh, in Jesus' name. Um, the next one is, you must worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Deuteronomy 13, 4. Um, this, this is when Satan tells Jesus he would give him authority over all the earth if he bowed down to him. Um, Jesus obviously knew, because he was the Son of God, that he was going to have all authority over the earth after he followed his assignment. So, obviously, there would be no reason to bow down to him. Although Satan was trying to um, trick him, and, you know, unsuccessfully, obviously. <laughs> um the first thing he said, the very first thing in the very beginning is, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. You know, um, that is the very first thing he said. That was the very first way to worship him, to worship his father, is to repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And it is very much at hand right now. It is very close. Um, his, his people are going to live on this earth, you know, and we are going to be heaven for everybody on this earth because this earth is just going to get darker and darker and darker. So we have to be heaven. So that and that's going to be living here on earth, not just necessarily whenever we die or whenever we transform. It's going to be here on earth. So get ready. Um, this is when he first uh, got his first disciple was was actually his first four disciples. And he says to them, from now on, you'll be fishing for people. You know, that's what our main goal is in, in uh, life as uh, worshipers of God, a worship of, of Jesus, is to fish for people. Um, that is how you earn treasures in heaven. That's how you um, make good, good kingly friends, you know, um, heavenly friends. That's how you... Um, that's how you, you, mean, you, you help people, you love people, you know, it's the, it's the two commandments, you know, and I'll get into those later. Um, the next one is, no one enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and the spirit. Humans can, humans can reproduce only human life, but the Holy Spirit gives birth to spiritual life. Okay? Um, basically, that's basically, he was telling Nicodemus whenever he was talking to him in secret um, about the Holy Spirit. That's what, that's what all that was about. Um, you must be, must be born into the Holy Spirit or basically must die. Your physical body must die, 
um, and then you born into Holy Spirit. That way you don't ever die because you you just transform into your into your spirit and you leave your your physical body behind, but you go on into heaven and the Millennium Kingdom, you know, um, with your physical body, but it's not the same as the physical body on here. It, it's a perfect body, um, a heavenly body. Um, next one is, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, and whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that the light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light. Because their deeds were evil. For everyone who practices evil hates the light, and does not come to the light, lest his deeds should be exposed. But he who does the truth comes to the light, that his deeds may be clearly seen, that they have been done in God. John 3 1. Uh, this is also while he was meeting with Nicodemus when he said this. Uh, the next one is You worship what you do not know. We know what we worship, for salvation is of, is of the Jews. But the hour is coming, and now is, when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. He says this to the woman at the well, um, whenever she was saying that she wasn't allowed to go to the temple in Jerusalem, but God was basically telling her that, or Jesus was basically telling her that, you don't have to go to the temple to worship. You can worship anywhere, um, and you can. You can cry out to God and worship worship Him anywhere, um, in the secret place, like He says um, later on, or you know while you're driving, you know you know anywhere um, throughout your day. You know that's what it says. You pray pray without ceasing. You pray and you worship without ceasing. Um, you can do it all day. It's all just a choice. Um, so here we go. Um, Right after that, his disciples tried to bring him some food. They went to go get food, and while he was talking at the woman at the well, and then whenever they came back, they tried to give him some. Um, and he's basically telling his disciples that he didn't need any food. Uh, so basically what he said is, My food is to do the will of him who sent me, and to finish his work. Do you not say, There are still four months, and then comes the harvest. Behold, I say to you, Lift up your eyes and look at the fields, for they are already ripe for harvest. And he who reaps receives wages, and gathers fruit for eternal life. And both he who sows and he who reaps may rejoice together. For in this saying is true, one sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap for that which was not labored, or I, I sent you to reap for which you have not labored. Others have labored, and you have entered into their labors. John 4.39 um, Basically what that saying is, is basically um, other people have uh, already told people about, you know, things um, of God, of Jesus, and stuff like that, and they're going to basically reap the rewards of that. I mean, they're not going in there cold turkey. They're, you know, we're reaping the rewards of of somebody already going through going through there. And basically what he was talking about, the woman at the well. He was talking about the woman at the well. She's going around. She's talking to people about what just happened with her and Jesus that they didn't know anything about. So... She is over there laboring, and then they're going to go reap that labor because they're going to reap the benefits of it, basically, because people are going to listen to him because of what he did to her. So he made it easier for them to, to witness to the people, um, the Gentiles. Um, so whenever they, uh, they, the people were there and they were, they were, they were liking what they were, what they were hearing, so basically they were asking him to stay to stay with them and, and teach them and heal them and everything. And Jesus was, Jesus knew that he had to go to other places. So basically he said, I must preach the good news of the kingdom of God in other towns too, because that is why I was sent. Luke 442. See, because that's what he, that's why he was sent. You know, that, that was his assignment was to preach, you know, the good news of the kingdom of God, um, to every place in, in, in Judah, um, Every, every place in Israel, um, and then also to Gentiles as well, because uh, he was he was preaching to Gentiles, a Samaritan at, at the at the well, um, the woman at the well. She was a she was a Gentile, and there was a couple of other Gentiles that he uh, preaches to, uh, that he ministers to. 
Um, here's the next one. Um, this is right. This is when Jesus calms the storm. Um, whenever they're going across the Sea of Galilee, Jesus calms the storm. He says, "Why are you so afraid? Have you no faith?" Matthew eight twenty three, Mark four thirty five, and Luke eight twenty five. That was in three of the Gospels. That's why it, that's why it was so much important. And the whole thing about that is how you worship your Father is to have faith. Have faith in things not seen. So you you believe in things not seen. That's faith. Um, you know, so that's yeah. That's basically how you worship your Father is by having faith. Um, here's the next one. Return to your house and tell what great things God has done for you. Okay? And he said this whenever he was proclaimed throughout the whole city the great things Jesus had done for him. Um, you know, uh, that's basically what he basically what he told him to do. He didn't tell him he had to do anything else. He just said, go tell everybody. You know, um, that was Matthew 8, 28, Mark 4, 5, and Luke 8, 26. Um, this is, this is when Jesus cast out the legion of demons out of, out of those two men, um, who were living in the graveyard, um, cast them out into a bunch of pigs and the pigs ran off, uh, were so tormented. They ran off and, uh, ran off into a, off a cliff. Um, the people who were watching the pigs weren't very happy about it. <laughs> um, so they were, they were telling Jesus to leave and his, and his disciples. Um, next one is. Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. Uh, that was the woman with the issue of blood. Basically, she had spent all of her money because she has an illness where you know she would bleed all the time and it would just never stop hardly. And she, she just couldn't get it to stop. And she had gone to all kinds of doctors and she had spent all kinds of money trying to get it to stop. But and she had so and she had so much faith because of what she had heard of what Jesus could do that. She thought that if she could just touch his touch the hem of his garment, you know, then she would be healed. And actually, it's actually what happened is that she did touch the hem of his garment and she was healed. Um, and this was why, because she had faith. Um, but you got to realize is when Jesus heals people, whenever he does all these miracles, he's not doing it just because he can do it. I mean, he can do it, but he, but he does it because people have faith. He says your faith makes you well. So basically, his you know the faith for him, faith faith for his father. Because when you have faith of him, you have faith for his father. Um, and his father is the one who does the miracles, not him. And that's the reason why he always prays to his father all the time because he knows that his father is the one that's doing the miracles, not through not him. Um, not that he couldn't do them, but like I said, he chose to pray because he wanted to show people that you need to pray because we can't do it without him. Um, he could have, but we can't. So he was, he was giving us an example of when we go out is that how, that's how we're supposed to do it. We're supposed to believe and have faith that his father can, or that he can now that he's, you know, in us or in, you know, around, you know, or within us, you know, we can do it through him, not through ourselves, you know, just through him and through his father. Uh, this is whenever he, um, whenever he brings Matthew into the fold, uh, brings Matthew as a disciple. Follow me, be my disciple. So basically, you be a disciple. You follow Jesus. You be a disciple. You know that's how you worship God. You know you can worship God that way. That's one of the best ways to worship worship God. Um, that's basically devoting your life to um, preaching the gospel, uh, as being a disciple. Um, you know, with every being, you know, love your God with all your heart and all your mind and all your soul um, and treat everybody as you would treat yourself. You know, um, that's the two main commandments. That's two, you know, commandments that Jesus said. Uh, and I'll get into that later. But that's that's how you, you know, you can really honor God is by by being a disciple. So the next one. Healthy men do not need a doctor. It is the sick ones that need me most. I have come to call not on those who think they are righteous, but those who know they are sinners. Matthew 9.13, Mark 2.17, Luke 5.27. Um, this is when Jesus was asked about fasting and the practice of it. And Jesus said to them, Can the friends of the bridegroom mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? But the days will come when the bridegroom will be taken away from them. Basically talking about him, he's going to be taken away. 
and then they will fast. No one puts a piece of unshrunk cloth on an old garment, for the patch pulls away from the garment, and the tear is made worse. Nor do they put new wine, skin, new wine into old wineskins, or else the wineskins break, the wine is spilled, and the wineskins are ruined. But they put new wine into new wineskins, and both are preserved. Matthew 9.14, Mark 2.18, Luke 5.34. Um, basically what that means is is you can't like, um, you can't put a bunch of new things in old, uh, wrappings, um, or you can't put unshrunk, you know, an unshrunk patch on a, on a hole in your jeans because it, whenever it shrinks, it'll tear, it'll rip off again. Um, you have to shrink the patch first and then put it on. So basically what that means is you have to prepare, <laughs> You have to prepare for everything. You have to prepare to put the patch on. You have to prepare to bring in new things from God, um, new things from the heavenlies. Um, and you have to get rid of all the old things or the container. Um, the container has to be empty or you have to get a new container in order to hold it. And basically what that means is you're basically, uh, you get the Holy Spirit, which is your new container. Um so we now have two witnesses, John and Matthew, of Jesus, who were traveling with him everywhere he went, eager to see more that the great man could do, and the great things he exclaimed, who both wrote an account of account of their time with him. Uh, basically, what that means is that's basically you know Matthew and John, which were, who were the two two of the smartest disciples they had. Um, um, Thomas was a real smart one too, but uh, he they both they both wrote a gospel. Um, you know, one of the main gospels, the four gospels, the the main ones, um, and they were with him. Almost, you know, Matthew wasn't with him the whole time, but John was with him from the very beginning. Whenever he um, manifested all the fish. Um, next is got, see, you have been made well. Sin no more, lest the worst thing come upon you. This is when um, the man by the pool of Bethesda. Um, was was healed. Um, he told him to take up his mat and walk because um, he couldn't walk. He was paralyzed from you know from the waist down. Um, so basically, what he was saying is, don't sin anymore, and or else the worst thing will come upon you. That's that's a way you worship God. That's the way you worship Jesus. Is not sinning, um, not sinning anymore. Um, next is, I tell you the truth, the son can do nothing by himself. He does only what he sees the father doing. Whatever the Father does, the Son also does. For the Father loves the Son and shows him everything he is doing. In fact, the Father will show him the Father will show him how to do even greater works in healing this man. Then you will truly be astonished. For just as the Father gives life to those who he raises from the dead, so the Son gives life to anyone he wants. In addition, the Father judges no one. Instead, he has given the Son absolute authority to judge. So that everyone will honor the Son, just as they honor the Father. Anyone who does not honor the Son is certainly not honoring the Father who sent him. Okay, he was talking about he was talking to the Pharisees whenever the you know Pharisees were upset that he called himself the Son of God. So this this was his his response to that. <laughs> um, as you can see, he, he's basically talking you know he's basically saying he does what his Father does. You know that's how you worship God. You you do what your your father does. You do what your what the son does. That's how you worship. Um, so basically, that's what he's saying is that he is just a a carbon copy of his father. Um, Jesus then said, "I tell you the truth: those who listen to my message and believe in God who sent me have eternal life. They will never be condemned for their sins, but they have already passed from death into life." He continues, And I assure you that the time is coming, indeed it is here now, when the dead will hear my voice, the voice of the Son of God. And those who listen will live. The Father has life in himself. And he has granted that same life-giving power to his Son. And he has given him authority to judge everyone, because he is the Son of Man. He continues more, Don't be surprised. Indeed, the time is coming when all the dead in their graves will hear the voice of God's Son, and they will rise again. Those who have done good will rise to experience eternal life, and those who have continued in evil will rise to experience judgment. I can do nothing on my own. I judge as God tells me. Therefore, my judgment is just, 
because I carry out the will of the one who sent me, not my will. John 5.19. Um, so basically, you you worship God by, by doing good, um, by helping people, by loving people, uh, by following his two commandments um, that encompass the Ten Commandments. Um, basically, basically what he's talking about whenever he's saying that the dead will hear his voice, um, the dead in their graves will, will hear the voice of God's Son and they will rise again. Um, basically, that's not really saying that they're going to come out of the graves, you know, um, basically Jesus thinks that everybody who doesn't, who doesn't live, doesn't walk in his light. He thinks they're dead. Um, they're basically walking zombies. So in, until you come into, come into the light and you get out of the darkness and you get out of the pit, then you are a walking zombie basically. And you know, whenever you go into the light, whenever you, uh, get the Holy spirit within you, you start listening to Christ and doing the things he says, you know, um, which will lead you to the Holy Spirit, guiding you in your life, then you are alive. Um, so basically, you're raising the dead. He's raising the dead, you know, um, bringing them into, from darkness into light. That's what he's saying. Um, we'll go next to him. Jesus said to him to preach, Awake, you who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you the light. Ephesians 5.14 this is claimed by Paul and disciple of Peter after Jesus' resurrection and ascension. See, that's just exactly what I just said. Um, so Paul, you know, knew, knew exactly what it was. He said, awake, you who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. See, you who, you who sleep, you who are dead, Christ will give you light. That's exactly what I just said. Um, all right, here's the next one. And the Father himself who sent me has testified to me. You have neither heard his voice at any time, nor seen his form. But you do not have his word abiding in you, because whom he sent, him you do not believe. You search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life. And these are they which testify of me. But you are not willing to come to me that you may have life. I do not receive honor from men, but I know you, that you do not have the love of God in you. I have come in my Father's name, and you do not, deceive, and you do not receive me. If another comes in his own name, him you will receive. How can you believe who receive honor from one another and do not seek the honor that comes from the only God? Do not think that I shall accuse you to the Father. There is one who accuses you, Moses in whom you trust. For if you believe Moses, you will believe me. For he wrote about me. But if you do not believe his writings, how will you believe my words? John 5.31 this was told to Jesus' disciples just before he chose his 12 disciples. So basically, he was basically let, letting them know, I mean, it's like, I mean, you're, you believe everybody else. You're believing, you know, John the Baptist. You're believing Moses. You're believing, all, you know, um, all these people, but you're not believing him, you know, or, you know, Jake or Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, you know, um, everybody before Jesus. Um, you're believing all them and, and, all, and all what they said, but you're not believing him. And he's and basically he was saying that he they wrote about him. So basically he existed from the very from the very beginning is basically what he said. Um, so you just have to you, you have to read into it and you know find out what he's saying. Um, it's very important. Um, this is right here is a, is the Sermon on the Mount. Um, he says lots of things to show you how to worship him and his Father. Um, here we go. Uh, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so they persecute the prophets who were before you. Matthew 5, 3, Luke 6, 20. Uh, so basically what he's saying is, you know, blessed are you if you're like him. Um, those are all his characteristics. That's those are all his father's characteristics. So if you're like him, then blessed are you, you know, and that's, that's basically how you worship your father. You act like him. You emulate him. Um, Christians are little Christ. That's what we are. 
um, you can't worship two masters, and he says that later on, and I'll t and, I'll, and we'll go through that as well. So, uh, Jesus then pronounces woes. He says, "But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full, for you shall not hunger. Woe to you who laugh now, for you shall mourn and weep. Woe to you when all men speak well of you, for so did their fathers to the false prophets." Luke six twenty four. He then teaches about salt and light. Jesus said, You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled under foot of men. Matthew 5.11, Luke 14.34 Now, this is very deep, okay? Um, he says you are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? Basically, he's saying is if you're, you're the salt, the children of God are salt, but if you lose your flavor, basically if you lose going out and be fishers of men, then you're no good to him. You know, um, that's what we are supposed to do. That's who we're, that's who we are in, in Christ is that, you know, we are fishers of men, um, and women, of course. Um, but you know, that's what we're supposed to do. And if you don't do that, you've lost your flavor. And that's basically what Jesus is saying. Um, and then he, he uh, re reiterates right here, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Matthew 5.13 Okay, spoken by Jesus during the Sermon on the Mount, just like I said. Um, basically what he's saying is, you know, that's basically the same thing, okay? If you're, if you're being fishers of men, then you need to be shouting from the rooftops, you know. Um, you're supposed to be a light. Uh, a lighthouse, you know, shining light to everybody, you know, the whole darkness of the sea, you know, spinning around and showing everybody who, who you are, that you're light, you know, and that's, that's what we need here in this time, um, in these end times. That's what we need. We need light to be shining out into the darkness, and that's what, you know, what we were supposed to do. Um, so you be a lighthouse, um, and then they, the ships come to you, the people come to you when you're a lighthouse. They always follow the light. Um, any, any person who's in darkness is always going to follow the light. Um, you turn on a light, the darkness gets dissipated. Um, you turn the light off, you shine a flashlight, they're going to come to the person with the flashlight because that's the one who has the light, um, which is basically what he's saying. Um, next we'll go, for, go to, Whoever therefore breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches men so shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does and teaches them, he shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I say to you, unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. Matthew 5.17 um, That's basically saying the same thing. Um, that's, the, that's the two commandments that he gave. Um, love your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind. And uh, love, uh, love others as yourself. Um, those two commandments, they encompass the Ten Commandments. He didn't abolish the Ten Commandments. It's just you can't do the Ten Commandments if you do those two commandments. Much easier to remember. Those are the ones you have to follow. Um, so, okay, I lost my place there. Sorry. Um, but I say to you that whoever is angry with his brother without cause shall be in danger of the judgment. Whoever says to his brother Raka shall be in danger of the council. Whoever says you fool shall be in danger of hellfire. Okay, that's basically just saying about being angry with your brother. Um, you're not supposed to be angry with your brother. You're supposed to pray for your enemies. Um, basically, you know, um, anger is not going to help anything. You got to remember, vengeance is the Lord's. Um, if the if the if the Lord can't get to him and can't get him to repent, then you know he'll deal with it. You know, you don't you don't deal with it. it you know that can just get you in trouble. Uh, with God and with with men, because um, you might do something you know for vengeance that might you know get you in trouble. Um, all right, that's gonna be it, that's gonna be it for this one. Um, like I said, I love you guys. I'm telling you these things for a reason. Um, basically, because Jesus put it on my heart. God put it on my heart. Okay, this is the time. It needs to be done. So you know, this is who we are. No denominations. No, we're not. We're not worshiping any other gods um any other dead people we're worshiping god his father jesus and the holy spirit 
That's it. The Trinity. That's it. That's all we worship. The rest of it is, is nothing. Um, you know, Jesus' mother, no. Um, the saints, no. They're just people. They're, I mean, they were, you know, Jesus' mother was a, was a vessel of Jesus, yes, but she's still just a person. Um, so you can't worship her. Um, it's not the way you worship him. Um, so I'll come back with part two, and we'll continue. All right, guys, I love you guys. I really do. I'm, I really love you. That's the reason why I'm trying to help you. Um, I'm, in, I'm in the wilderness still because I love you. Um, I'm sacrificing. I've been sacrificing um, because I love you guys. All right. I'm Pastor Anthony. I'll be back later. Thank you.